Hallelujah, brethren. Greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a beautiful thing for us to dwell in harmony with the word of God. Uh, this time around, I want to share with us from uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 13. This is a familiar story. When Moses sent the spies to spy the land of Canaan, the Bible says 12 men were chosen, one from each tribe. And they successfully entered the land, moved through it. But the Bible says in verse 27 that when they came back, said, we came to the land where you sent us, and surely they are found that it flows with milk and honey, and even they brought the fruit. But 28, it says, nevertheless, the people are so strong that dwell in the land. They are so, the cities are walled and very great. And we saw giants in the land. And said so we were like grasshoppers before them. When you read the story of God delivering Israel from Egypt, he never mentioned to them about the giants. He never in any way dwelt on the story of the Anax in the land. Someone may wonder why. Because God was just telling them, you're going to a land full of milk and honey, it's so fertile, you've got to enjoy yourselves. The Anax were there, the giants were there, but our God never told the children of Israel. Could it have been a way of trying to make them fall into a ditch? No. God knew so, so well that the issue of the giants was not a task for the children of Israel. That was God's case. He was going to fight, was going to sort it out himself. There was no need for him to tell, him, to tell them about something he was going to handle. And he was only telling them about the good things. That's why even us as ministers of God... Don't come here to tell you bad things or hell or what. Yeah, it is there. But for us, we won't tell you what can help you stick to what is right. I'm telling you when we stick to what is right, when we stick to the truth, there is freedom. That's what the Bible says. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Not knowing the wrong. That's why many times we find that we have a problem. Sometimes we really... Uh, shake when we talk about demons and that is not our gospel the gospel is the gospel of truth that sets men free and you shall know that jesus is the savior you know that god has the power and i'm telling you when you know these demons shall not stand but we are not taking our time to speak about the negatives the bible says that these 10 men brought an evil report don't speak an evil report about yourself there is so much good news that you cannot dwell on the evil in your life. They may be evil, yes, they will be evil. There will always be darker times. But we are not preoccupying ourselves with what is dark. God has done so much in our lives that we cannot concentrate on the negative. There is too much positive to talk about in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The ten men had a fruit. The Bible says the fruit was so big. They could not carry it the way you carry apples, but they had to get big branches of poles to carry them, which means it was an evidence that the, the, the land was so fertile. But now they shifted their eyes from the fertility of the land, from the beauty of the land, from the excellency, or from what God is really anticipating for them. And they put, fixed their eyes on the giants. And it became a threat. It surpassed what the greatness they had seen in their land. Men and women of God, we need to be careful what we are concentrating on. What are you concentrating on? What are you preoccupied with? What preoccupies your, 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 your life? What, what in your work with God, what is it that makes, um, what is it that takes much of your time? Is it what has not happened? Is it many people are anticipating for wrong? Like in this COVID season, people are anticipating for very many wrong things. What are you anticipating? The Bible says that the two men, Caleb and Joshua, came up and still did because when the Christian men talked about how the annex were so big, how the giants were so tall and they were grass, they were like grasshoppers before them, and everybody was shaking. Those of you who are there, there are people who are very, very skilled in bringing bad news. 
We thank God that the word of God is good news. We don't want bad news. Personally, I do very little with media which has uh, news full of bad news. I don't want a lot of bad news. I want good news. We want good news in our families. Fathers, bring good news to your children. Make sure that good news prevail in your home. Do things that bring good news. Mothers, be good news. Fathers, be good news. That's why Jesus brought good news. I pray in the name of Jesus that Christian families shall have good news. We are not going to spread evil for report. We are not going to look for faults in people. We are not fault finders. We are going to be mentors to the people we stay with and that is what God delights in. The Bible says the two men, Caleb and Joshua, they still the people when they were shaking and crying and saying, what did you bring us here? Oh my goodness. You women, children of God, I want to remind you one thing, that there is a problem when we forget the far God has brought us. Can you imagine? These people are on the verge of crossing the Jordan to Canaan and they have now begun to cry and they're saying, why did you bring us to die here? Can you imagine they forgot how God had fought for them? They themselves had cried when you, when you read Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. They, the Bible says, God, when God was calling Moses, he said, my, go and bring my people. I have heard their cry. I have seen their afflictions. I have known their torture. They were in a place where they cried so loud. They, their cry was so high that God had. And now God brings, uh, brings Moses. They are free from uh, the affliction of the, the Israelites. You remember how they crossed the Red Sea? You see how they get water out of the rock? You see, God is doing clearly, plainly, the outstretched arm of the Lord is amidst them. But when they talk, they tell them about the giants, they begin to cry. They forget. Never forget the far God has brought you. It's very important to remember. I love the book of Deuteronomy. God is full of, the Bible is full of remember, remember, remember. I am here also as a minister of God, tell you where you are, whoever is listening to me. Remember the far God has brought you. You would have died in 1990, but you are alive. You, that accident you, which you survived in 2000, you are alive. Remember how far God has brought you. Even when there was no money, even when there was a lot of evil, you were able, some of you, are, you are confessing Jesus as your personal savior. That is a great deal, excuse me. There are people who want to, to, to receive the Lord, but they are not able. Remember how far the Lord has brought you and don't quake at the giants. But the good news I have here is that Oh, there is a giant who is above these giants, the Anax. I love the story about David. He saw a giant, Goliath, which had scared the Israelites for 40 days. King Saul and the army, 40 days they are running before a giant. But this young man saw a, the giant, Goliath as a dwarf because the God he serves is a giant above Goliath. Can you get it that the God we serve, the God who called you, the God who knows you by name is bigger than every giant in your life. God is greater than every problem you ever face and you'll ever face. That is a point of faith. That is an issue. It's a faith issue. Know that there will be no problem that will come to you that will be bigger than your God. That there will never be a challenge. Just know from now that there will never be a challenge. Whether you are 20, you are going to live. There will never be a challenge that is bigger than our God. Because God is the big of the biggest. He's the great of the greatest. If we hold on this, we shall laugh at our enemies. We shall stand like David says, excuse me, you are coming in me with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the giant of the giants. Of the big of the biggest. That is called victory. We need faith to believe God as a giant of the giants. How could the Israelites really reach a time God has told them, you are going in the land. And then you say, these people are so big, we can't go into the land. No, that is undermining the promises of God. Children of God, the promise of God is our treasure. Is, is more precious than gold. Is more costly than silver. The promise, the word of God. Uh -huh. I love this COVID season. I think it is a time of updating our lives with the word of God. I, I thank God for COVID season. I've been reading my word, the word of God. I've been eating, not just reading, but eating, you know. Ezekiel says I ate it. It was, like, it, it, it was as sweet. It was like honey. May the word of God be sweet in, in your mouth because it will help you to stick on the promise and you will know God is a giant. 
The Bible says the children of Israel had forgotten. They now concentrate, don't concentrate on your problem. Don't concentrate on the challenges are many, but God is above the challenge. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 30 verse 5, that weeping may last for you. There will be weeping times. Don't be surprised. There will be times of darkness, but says joy will come in the morning. Child of God, there will be a morning for you. Your morning is coming. Your morning is on your way. Do not die in the, in, in, in the night. Do not persist on. Hold on. That's why Jesus told his disciples and asked them, How long will you not have faith? How long? Men and women of God, God wants us to develop a faith so that we don't, we don't shrink before giants, but we shall bow before God and worship at the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. We need to seek God in a certain way so that we are not trapped in the giants of this world. There are so many around us. There are some are within us. As I told you about fear in us and intimidation from within, you think you are nothing, that this despising yourself, seeing yourself as nobody, that is a giant before you. But there is a God. I'm here to introduce to us and to affirm to us there is a God who is big. He made heaven and earth is your God. There is nothing that can be compared to him. There is nothing that can be in the same level with him. Just trust this God. Just believe this God. And when Caleb and Joseph still did, they said, no, 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 no. We can't look at the giant. There is a fruit. Don't look at the problem. Look at the promise. What is God saying in your life? And by the fact that God has promised, he will fulfill it. It may take a while, but just know that our God is a God who fulfills the promises that he has said. He does it. Literally, he does it. Lift your, lift your faith. It's a time to lift our faith to God. I know some of you are going through a situation. You want to give up. You think what is surrounding you is so big. And men and women of God, I want to tell you, there's nothing that happens to you that has never happened to men, other people. There is nothing new. The Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, is full of men of faith. Yes, we need to have... And this, and this generation is a generation. We read the Bible everywhere there is, there is good news. On our phones, we have our Bibles. We have them in our cars. We have them everywhere. Get into the word of God and stick to the promise of God. As the promise of God grows big in your life, the problem will get smaller. The problem gets smaller. It diminishes as you magnify God in your life. The, the situation will get smaller and God will be glorified. I just want to encourage you today. That don't look at the at what at what is don't. That's what the Bible says. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Can you walk by faith? Not what you see, but what God has said. Not what you are experiencing. You may be going through pain. I have testimonies. Yes, but I've told God you are going to do it, and I've believed God, and God has done it. Bible says in Psalm thirty-four verse eight that test and see. Our Christian work must be something that has to manifest in our time. Nobody is going to live for you, your Christianity. Take it by you. That's called a personal walk with God. Even when the ten men were giving a false report, the two, Joshua and Caleb, gave a good report. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you are going to be a Christian in your generation who is going to spread good news. That's why I'm not here to say bad news. I know our God is able. There may times will come which are, which are impossible, but our God is more impossible. There's nothing impossible with him. There's a sin which is looking impossible in your, in your life. There is a situation that is, that is seeming so dark I want to encourage you as a servant of God that the Bible is clear. The Bible, God has, in the Bible, God has done it several days. People who had thought it cannot work, it has worked. He is not going to fail with you. He's not beginning with you. He did in the Bible times. You are not a grasshopper. You were a giant in a giant God, bringing down the giants of the world because God, our God, is unlimited. He's using limited men to bring unlimited results. And and this is our season. May you rise up in faith. May you take, put away fear. May you put away doubt and unbelief. And God will do us good. You are not a grasshopper. You, you will serve a giant God. And we have the same DNA. If our God is a giant above Goliath, then we have the DNA of God. We are able to rise up in power. And we are able to conquer. We are able to stand out. 
with a testimony. May God give you a testimony. May God, God give you a spirit of faith. May God give you a spirit of standing, looking at the promise, not at the problem. And God will be magnified. God bless you. God continue to uphold you. It is within your hand to hold on to God. And God will not fail you. May God bless you.